He would have made himself Calvino in the model of Franco for another 30 years of dictatorship if some institutional resistance possibly involving the king, I don't know about that, but what I know for sure is that one third of the Spanish population went into the streets and said, no, we will not have dictatorship, we're sick of terrorism, we don't want it. And they correctly said the reason for this is somehow connected to the war with Iraq. It is, in a certain way, quite close to connected. Of course, it's NATO intelligence. It's not being done by Patsy's, it's being done by NATO intelligence. One third of the Spanish population, one third, went into the streets. Two million in Madrid. Now, of course, we represent the, uh, the phlegmatic uh, Anglo-Saxon part of the world, and we are politically backward, I'm sorry. If Spain can do that, I've seen general strikes in Italy, they have them a lot. Uh, there's a movement in the US which I think has merit, which is to, to at least propagandize the idea that if there is an illegal, illegitimate war, especially one predicated on a new 9-11 or a new fake Gulf of Tonkin, because those are the two choices, the no B-52, that this is the only answer. You would go into the streets and say no. Uh, have a demonstration, some kind of mass action, shut down the machine uh, and uh, protest and, and do it vociferously, and maybe you'll be able to change public opinion. Because if there is an attack on Iran, there will be a huge campaign of demonization and, of course, war psychosis coming out of the, out of the controlled media. So I recommend that people have a Spanish response a Spanish response to whatever is coming, if it does come, and that can also then be factored in to the, uh, to the ruling uh, elite, to the September criminals, that is to say, and to try to convince them not to do this. In other words, try to tell them that they're going to have mass resistance. I would also cite the Cap Putsch in Berlin back in, uh, in 1920, when there was an attempted quasi-fascist coup d'etat that was stopped by a similar kind of mass strike. And so forth. It's the only way to go, and there are other examples. So I recommend a Spanish response. The impeachment of Bush is, it's obviously urgent. Uh, on Tuesday, Congressman Kucinich, who has at least done something, Congressman Kucinich is going to try to put through the impeachment of Cheney uh, tomorrow, U.S. time. I urge you to support it, uh, talk it up, tell people about it. Call in if you have radio call-ins. you have radio call-ins? You can call in and comment. Talk about it. Say, that, look, there's 75% of the people in the U.S. are against the war. More than half are against the Bush and Cheney. Uh, and they, it's simply unimaginable that these people should remain in office. If you don't impeach them, all their precedents will be valid. Every signing statement, every liberticide law that they've ran through, because you've got basically you've got to overturn the entire body of precedents of the Bush administration by impeaching them. Therefore, it's valid to impeach them up to the last day in office for that effect. And above all, I recommend impeachment as war avoidance. In other words, if you don't want World War III, impeachment is the answer. And again, for people in other countries, why isn't the U.S. ambassador called in to explain the rogue B-52 case the six dead, the missing cruise missile. Everybody indicates that those missiles were going to join the Israeli attack on Syria and or Iran on September 6th. So we've just had a brush with World War III. We had a brush with World War III at the end of March, beginning of April. We've just had another brush. Call in the U.S. ambassador. Why are you in NATO? Why are you going to allow yourself to be dragged into this? Uh, it, it just makes no sense. And finally, I recommend, for all of these points, if it wasn't clear, uh, I did the best I could, but please take a look at 9-11 Synthetic Terror. And with that, I thank you and welcome on the floor.
clock has stopped at this end. Oh, is that right? It's 10. Actually, 5 to 10. It's actually 5 to 10. Sorry, I didn't now. know. I didn't know it. If it's 5 to 10, then I'm afraid we are need to go time for questions. 10. Oh. It's 10 o'clock. I'm very sorry about that. But the gentleman at the back, whose job it is to get us all out of here, we're just going to have to go. I'm sorry about that. I didn't know it. <laughs> oh, sorry. It wasn't me. I was not <laughs> 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 I got a lot of well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's quite a fun uh, detail. It tricked me as well, actually. I was like, I was going to be. The first show is going to be the final result of Hansel Bergen's change to effect. It's quite a different film. It's going to be announced in the UK on the 24th and 25th of November at the Roxy Cinema in Brixton. And there are going to be two shows. and all these people. The issue is, what are you doing to stop World War III? You can see what I mean. I'm making the very best effort I can. I think I can stand up and say, whatever I can do, I'm doing. And I want to know from them, what are they doing to you, stop you World the World War III? You made the point about the anti-war movement, trying to put on pressure. That's what the Kenny Bunkport morning yeah, was. So Kenny Bunkport was, we reach out to you, join us in something important to stop World War III. And then they turn around and say, no, we never signed it. Well, of course they signed it. But maybe they didn't sign it. Maybe that no. Of course they signed it. They signed it. See, this is crazy. Now you're in the land of Oz. They signed it. Of course they signed it. The reason, if they had said we want to withdraw our signatures because we're afraid, I suppose we would have said fine and leave it at that. But they, but they didn't. They said we forged document. it. They're crazy. They're no, lying. They said they signed a, a different document that was about um, getting Cheney. It's ridiculous. That's what there are claim. lots of eyewitnesses that say it's not true. And above all, you have their signatures on the page. They signed it. No, because she was. She said she she approved it by phone. Verbal contract is valid in every U.S. state. I don't know what it is here. In the U.S., if you if you say I want to be bound, sign my name. It's valid. You can look at the Exxon. Uh, I'm sorry, the Texaco. Uh, Pennzoil case, it's all based on verbal contracts. Yeah, it's worth I like that Edward, I'll maybe see that Edward. One person with intelligence and courage can transform the nature of the entire event in the face of thousands of zombies. And he does it with an investigate 9 11 sign. And we've had many other interventions. We've had interventions on Giuliani, Mrs. Clinton, basically none of them have, uh, have escaped this. And I think this is a model for what, what individuals can do. Because you as an individual can change the, the dynamics of an entire social event just by speaking up. 